。首先，非常感谢大家的到来。看起来，其实我本来是可以用中文讲的，但是因为我准备的是英文，然后相信大佬们也能听懂我说的英文，所以我后续会用英文来演讲。Okay, first thing first. Thank you so much for being here. It's my great honor to make this presentation today. I am an algorithm engineer from the observability team at Alibaba Cloud, and I am going to show you our explanation in using AI GC technologies in the observability field. Okay. Please allow me to introduce myself and the pro and the service we provide. Okay, we, I work in the observability team and the service we provide is called ARMS, which means the application real-time monitoring service and it can be assessed in the Alibaba Cloud. And for me, I specialize in the AI OOPS. Here AI OOPS means we are using algorithms, of course, including machine learning algorithms to make the monitoring system uh, easier, safer, and faster. And uh, by the way, I'm a doctor and I work in the uh, AI OOPS. Okay. We have four parts for today's presentation. And the first part is uh, about why do we need a natural language to prompt culture bull. Uh, and the second part is the role we have taken. And not only go uh, I'm not only going to show you the technologies that we have tried and turns out to be effective but also the technologies that we have made many uh, experiments and it turns out they are not as helpful as we expect. And the third part is where are we now? I'm going to show you a demo of our natural language to plume chatbot. And the first part is about the future development. <laughs> so what is PlumeQL? PlumeQL is the query language, uh, is a query language in the, uh, 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 time series database for Prometheus. And Prometheus is called the defector standard for Kubernetes application. Here, the defector standard means that almost all of the matches that we correct from the Kubernetes application will be stored and will be queried in Prometheus database. And we can see an example here. We can use the we can use the Prometheus here to get the uh, uh, top 10 applications with the highest response time. And so why do we need a chat book? It's like the answer lies in three C's. The first C is about, uh, uh, stands for complex. Cause the syntax uh, in all uh, the grammar in, in Prometheus is very complex cause uh, it is very different from the conventional SQL language because we deal with uh, the problem call, deal with the matches that are stored in vectors but not the test stored in tables. So the, you can see the syntax in the problem call is very different from what we use in the SQL. And the second C stands for confusing because the matrix, uh, a problem call cons is consists of the uh, functions and the matrix names. But the matrix name can sometimes be very confusing. This is because the matrix uh, we saw in the Prometheus is corrected by different agents that provided by different company, like the Skywalking and uh, of open time matrix, and of course ARMS and database trace. The matrix name can be <laughs> different, and sometimes the, they are very confusing. And the third C uh, stands for comedy. Because PromQL is a language that very commonly use. Because not only the developers and the SIEs can use PromQL, but also the leaders and the PDs. Because we can get the SI, SLAs, SLOs, and the incomes, outcomes, PVs, UVs by using PromQL. So <laughs> that's why we need a natural language to PromQL triple. Okay. Now is the role we have taken. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you some technology here. So what is the first thing to do? We are going to build a natural language to Prometheus. But maybe someone will say, maybe we need to buy some GPUs, or maybe we need to collect some uh, materials like uh, natural language to Prometheus Q&As. But they are important, but 
they are not the first thing we need to do. The first thing we need to do is to test whether the chat GDP is good enough in this scenario. If the answer is yes, we don't need to do anything. All we need to do is just to wait the Tong Yi Qian Wen, and I, we can use the API they provide. Luckily, mm, <laughs> we have decent experiments, and it turns out that chat GDP cannot handle this task. And we can see an example here. I asked the ChatGDP to write a prompt call and chat me the top 10 applications with the highest average response time. And it provided me one, but this one is not the one I need because the metrics name here is, <coughs> is different with what we use in our system. It doesn't work. And, uh, and it is some um, wrong intent, uh, user intention recognition because the average response time is the average per request, not the uh, orange per minute. It doesn't make any sense, at least in the APM season. Okay, so the LM that for general purpose has some knowledge in prompt call syntax because the grammar here is correct, but in lack of uh, knowledge about the ARM season, uh, our season, uh, he has no idea about the matrix name and user's intention. It seems like the LM needs more knowledge and we need to put the knowledge to into the LM. We have to, um, now we, the second step for us is to make a decision uh, for any, anyone who wants to build an LM-based service in the first day, the, the second step is to make a decision whether you are going to build a fine training project or a prompt engineering, prompt engineering one. Here, the fine tuning means you are going to build your own LM with enough compass, or we can say uh, uh, language materials. Uh, on the other hand, in the prompt engineering, means that you are going to use an existing LM. For, uh, for example, we can use ChatGDP or we can use Tong Yi Qian Wen without any modifying any parameters, but instead just provide some prompts. So what is prompt? Prompt is the additional knowledge that accompanies your question when it is being inputted into an LM. We can see an example here, the question raised by your user. Maybe we can say <coughs> a user is asking, could you please give me a prompt QR and I want to see the response time of each of my service. And the knowledge is the, is the information we, uh, you, <coughs> provide from your system. I mean, the context in green and context in yellow. And uh, all, uh, both of the knowledge in the, and the query will be input to an LM, uh, like chat GDP, and the LM will give you a better answer because it has more knowledge about your system and your intention. Okay. We also made a decision tree for the beginners in LM, uh, for who are interested in the LM-based uh, service. So the first question you need to ask yourself is that, are you an experienced NLP peer? If you don't know what is an NLP peer, um, just, just choose the prompt engineering one. But if your answer is yes, the second question for you is, do you have enough GPUs? I mean, like dozens. If you do have that much GPUs, fantastic. You can try. The, you can use the fine tuning project. Maybe you can build your own chat GDP in your field. <laughs> you can build a company. But your answer, if your answer is no, we recommend the prompt engineering. And don't be sad because it has been shown many times. Prompt engineering can achieve the performance just as good as the fine training one in many films. And let's turn to another branch. If you are not an experienced NLP, the second question for you is, do you have mm, some good knowledge in some fields? Like, if do you have a good knowledge in uh, Kubernetes or observability? If your answer is yes, then the prompt engineering is the best path for you, okay? And if you don't have any uh, a good knowledge in any fields, uh, just found someone to help you with that uh, for us, for our team, because we don't have some experience in our peer, neither do we have enough GPUs. So also, uh, we try the prompt engineering one. So what kind of prompt works? This slice is the most important one, at least for me. I wish I can, I can see in like several months before it will save 
me a lot of time and effort, and of course, money from my team is very important. Okay, our first try is to uh, we use the uh, mm, here the prompt is the information information about natural language to PromQL. So we uh, in the first step we use the documents about PromQL from the. Uh, uh, official Prometheus website, and it turns out the accuracy rate is behind than 5%. It's a disaster. We made some analysis, and then it turns out the matrix names are different from those we use in our system, because we need the matrix name in the, uh, in the prompt girl. And secondly, the documents are too long, and the LM just cannot get a point about how to write a correct prompt girl. And the second, <laughs> second try we did is the, uh, uh, we correct the QAs about Prometheus from a, a community platform called Stack Overflow. And <laughs> it turns out the performance is a little bit increased, but it's still very low. Because the uh, similarity, the metrics are different from those uh, used in our system. Secondly, many of the answers are incorrect. And thirdly, some of the function they mentioned is outdated and it uh, has been invalid, invalid now. So um, after these experiments, we see that we need to provide some information about our metric then. And we have the third trial. Okay, we use the Q&A is correct from our users and we ignore the reasoning steps. And the problem curl has a very, but it turns out it doesn't work. Because the problem card has a complex, in, a complex syntax, and the answer list of listening steps are insufficient for the LM. And so we need some listening steps because we need to address the complex syntax. So we use the QAs from our users plus the explanation of problem card that generated by ChatGDP. And it turns out the accuracy right here is like uh, 20. 20% maybe, and the uh, explanation, but it, it's not good enough. The explanation are not always correct because it's generated by AI, but not human being. So it, it doesn't work on, and such prompts are sufficient and insufficient for the LM that generate accurate prompt curl. After a very long journey, we found a, a, a kind of prompt that really work is uh, it, the, the trade of song uh, prompting, which is uh, proposed by Google. I mean, the Google Brain Lab, if I correct well, and that time the, the accuracy increased from the 20% to 70%. Uh, that at that time, we used an open source uh, LM, and then uh, later we used the Q1. I mean, the one provided by Tong Yi Qianwen, and then we get another 10% increase. Okay, so what is Trail of Song? Trail of Song is a kind of prompting engineering technology that uh, Google used to improve the performance uh, of the chat GDP to deal with the uh, logical tasks, like the mathematical tasks we did in our primary school. It's quite interesting. Here we can see an example, and we can say the trail of song uh, prompt is, is the knowledge you, you give to the LM, and the trail of song prompt is the knowledge with reasoning steps. We can see an example here in the standard prompting. Uh, the question raised by the user is, the, is a very simple uh, uh, logical or mathematical task. Like the Cafetina have 23 apples, if they use 20 to make range and both six more, how many apples do they have? And the uh, Q&A with uh, similar, is, which is a similar uh, questions like the one raised by your user, all of these will be put into LM, but the ChatGDP cannot give us the right answer. <laughs> and uh, because the answer uh, for the prompt the prompt is a mathematical about mathematical test about the Rogers tennis, and it just said the answer is 11 without explaining why the answer is 11. But in the trail of song prompting, in the answer, we not only provide that the answer is 11, but we show that how I can get 11 here. The 
context in blue is the, com is the knowledge with reasoning steps. At that time, the chat GDP can, can get the right answer. You can chat this, this example in your chat GDP. It, it really works. So, okay. If you are familiar with PromQL, you can get the idea because writing a PromQL is very similar to what we did in our primary school. It's just like a mathematical task. We can see an example. Here is the tray of song prompt in the natural language to PromQL. The question here is write a PromQL and show me the top 10 applications with the highest average response time in the past five minutes. The first step, you need to get the average response time. The first step for you is to calculate the total latency of each application in the past five minutes with the following. PromQL is uh, some by service and some over time arms um, HTTP requests, five minutes. And then you need to calculate how many requests or how many calls in the past five minutes and you need to use this, this PromQL. Uh, what we change is that the, the metrics name we use the uh, arms HTTP requests count but not seconds. We, then we get the second PromQL. For the third one, the the uh, PromQL we get in the third part is, is to divide the PromQL we use in the first, first step by the one we use in the second step. If, if you are familiar with, with PromQL, you, need, you can get this. And uh, now we can get the average response time for every service at that time with the PromQL in the third steps. But what the user asks is uh, show me the top 10 applications with the highest response time. So we need another top key function here, then we can get the final program. Okay, let's turn to the architecture of our chatbot. We have both an uh, offline system and an online system. In our offline system, we have many natural language to PromCal Q&A examples, and of course, in the Trail of Song style, just what I have shown you in the uh, last, last slides. And all of these Q&As will be put into a test period here, and this documents will be cut into several Q&As, and then all of these Q&As will be uh, turned into uh, the vector that consists of mem members, numbers, yeah. It's called embedding. After the embedding, we get many vectors that consist of, of numbers, and all of these vectors will be stored in the database. Here, we got, uh, we've got the offline system, uh, now we turn to the online system. Here, when a user is asked, show me the top 10 applications with the highest response time. Similarly, the test, these words will be turned into the um, new, <laughs> new, new <laughs> vectors consists of uh, vectors consists of numbers, and then we can get the user input vector. And then the next step is to search the top k vectors from the database and with the highest similarity. It's very easy to <laughs> to know that. And now we have k plus one vectors and all of these vectors consist of numbers will be converged into the test and then we can get a uh, use the uh, the uh, question raised by our user and and the k uh, uh, q and a's that's similar to the scenario and all of this information will be put into the lm then we can get the final uh, prompt call we want okay I'm going to show you a demo. You can see the chat book here. Oh, it's like, need to put this. You can see. Oh, it doesn't work. It's okay. okay. We can see the chat book here is provided by arms, quickly and create the bottle called PromQL, and you can see the scenario we have supported. And you can just ask it an answer about PromQL. It's like write a PromQL, and uh, I want the, the, the top 10 applications, applications with the highest response time, and the LM is thinking. 
then you can get the problem QR and you can get the reasoning steps. And we will, turn, we will put the problem QR into our Grafana service. It's a Grafana, but it, we cannot see the whole service. And you can see the metrics there. And it looks like a freezer answer, right? A little bit. And I will go you I will show a random service. Random service now the right of prompt and show me the response time of a application like blah 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 and just wait for the answer. Here is the answer provided by the LM and we can put it in our Grovana service. Okay. And run query and it is no data because we don't really have a service called a file. I just type it randomly. Remove this, and you can see the application of each service in ARMS. We can also raise the uh, question by in, in English. Just say write a problem and show me the uh, the error count of my service. Run, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> then we get the problem QR here and put it in our Grafana service. Create run query and no data because we don't really have a service called this. Remove it. And you can get the rise. And we, you can see the service we have, uh, the scenario we have covered, and we also have some examples about the problem girl. Okay, it's a demo, and can turn to another slide. Okay, so where are we now? Currently, we have covered 14 scenarios. Uh, including the response time, error rate, QPS, and uh, HT HTTP state con. And the accuracy there is like uh, about 40, <laughs> about 76.69%. Uh, and also for the uh, scenario we didn't cover or the wrong case, we can also provide, maybe the final problem call is not correct, but we can provide very inform, uh, very helpful information, right, the correct matrix name and the proper syntax. Okay, the most important thing is uh, because we use the prompt, uh, the prompt engineering one, but not the fine training. So the, it is very easy for us to cover a new scenario. The only thing we have, what we have to do is to add some like five examples about the natural language to prom example here. Okay, we also made some comparison among our query system and the chat GDP. We check that chat GDP without any prompt and it turns out the the uh, problem card it provides is wrong. Also, the grammar or the syntax is correct, but the metrics name is not because they, are, they have no idea what we use in our system. And the intention recognition is wrong because uh, it is, uh, we, I am asking the average response time and it gave me the average per minute. It's, it doesn't make any sense in our scenario. And you can see the ARMS query assistant. I used the q and tuber provided by uh, Tong Yi Qianwen also in Alibaba Cloud with five, uh, three, four, two, five prompts. And the prompt QR, he, uh, the, uh, the query assistant showed me is correct. We can see the correct syntax, correct metric name, and correct intent, user intention recognized recognition okay now we turn to the row ahead uh, natural language to seco natural language to seco language is a very emerging topics in in the observability field and also in the uh, database field and something else and the leading companies like Google and the Datadog Dynatrace and the new relic have released their uh, SQL, uh, their natural language to SQL language. And uh, the Google also provide a service uh, that can translate from natural language to prompt crawl. But even, but they are just inviting 
uh, their user to test it out, but it has it cannot be assessed by the public now, and <laughs> and even Google cannot uh, guarantee the 100% accuracy rate at uh, with the chat GDP. And if we have a very wrong way to go, the first my the first my stall should be the natural language to chat to chat a uh, to chat service. Uh, here we can get the, we can get the trust means that the the prompt or the SQL language provided by AI is 100% correct. Then we can get the trust, but. Uh, it has, uh, and the topic in, at that time should be chat with me and get the trust you want. Here is the first milestone. And for the second milestone is the chat boost for morning. It's just like an experienced uh, engineer and uh, it can give me the, uh, the topic should be chat with me and get the alert alert and uh, a fixed suggestion you want, but we still need a human being to make the decision whether I will change the suggestion, uh, I need to someone to, to confirm these things. And for the first, uh, for the first milestone is, is the chat oops. At that time, the topic should be chat with me and I will take care of your system and all of your applications. It's just like a human being. Is like a talented and experienced and of course hardworking engineer, just like your courage at that time. It's the real chat boost. Okay. Oh, thank you so much for your time and your attention. We have discussed a lot today, and we have on, I have only two messages that I really want to share with you. The first one is that the trail of song prompt really works in the natural language to Pumga Chabu. And the second one is that the Q&A examples with step-by-step -step prompt crowd generation are effective in our scenario. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy your natural day holiday. If you don't have a holiday, just have a nice day. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, your question, <laughs> or you can ask me in English or Chinese. <laughs> uh, my English is very bad. Then. 刚才有一些地方可能听得不是很清楚，然后我想问一下，就是这个和同意情况是有什么关系吗？就是我们是基于同意情况去做的吗？对，是的，我们就是我们给那个大模型提供一些 prompt， 就是一些提示词，然后我们最后会调同意情况的接口，然后它会给到我们这个答案。嗯 ，OK。然后上面那个百分之七十六这个是怎么测出来的？哦，这个是准确率的。是我们这边是有有五十一个 case， 然后我会按照就会给他们打分如果他完全对的话，就完全是我问的那个意思的话，然后我直接能运行，这样我就给他一分如果是他稍微错了一点点，就比如说有个上拜他加了一个下划线，这种就给他扣一点分，然后这么整个起来之后，就有了评分机制，有了一个有了五十一个 case， 然后我就给他算到大概这么一个准确率。哦，这个测试集有没有可能再放大一点？呃，是可以的，我们也刚好有这个打算。其实这块其实最理想的是有一些公开的标准的数据集嘛，但是因为做这个自然语言到 Prompt Cloud 的人其实很少，据我们所知，就是我们阿里云做了，然后 Google 做了，别的都是做一些他们自己的查询语句，像做 SQL 的就非常多，所以这个我们也有打算把它扩大一点，但是需要一点时间，因为这 Community 有点小。谢谢。我想问一下，那个普罗，因为有很多版本嘛，就是可能在一个公司里面也有可能有很多版本并存的。那如果是它 QL 有区别的话，你这边就通义千文能够自动识别出来吗？还是需要自己再输入一些别的什么信息？啊，这块有两方面吧，就是我们这个，其实这个 Prom QL 跟你那个普罗米是。普罗米修斯自己的版本其实关系没有那么大，因为他发布新版本，他可能只是加了一点点的这个算子，然后你那些老的算子，像这种什么 top k、some by， 还有 some over time， 其实这种是一个非常非常经典的，他们不怎么会动的。所以您说的这个问题，可能
对我们这个性能影响不是很大。就算如果说您这个是真的影响到了一些算子，影响到他使用了，这也没有关系。我们这有提到一个，是因为我们用的这种是 prompt engineer， 就提示词工程这块的话，你只要给到他一些相应的例子，他就能 get 到你的那个点。就是你的提示词包括了，比如说 Promis 就是新版本的新的函数，我给他例子，他就能返回来给我。啊，你们就是在那个普罗的基础函数上面，然后再进行组装了，是吧？对对，这种就是我们写的 Promis 都是标准的 Promis， 只是它的那个 Matrix Name 是因为是我们自己的指标，是 ARMS 的指标，然后我们给它拼出来的。谢谢。因为因为我现在比较好奇的是，如果普罗它因为它是在不断升级嘛，升级的话，它有些语言或者说更简洁，或者说它就会再给你包一层的话，你这边能够自动去做这个识别吗？还是说还需要再训练？嗯，应该是不能自动做识别的。<笑>但因为它这个就是从算子这个角度，它其实更新的没有那么快的，因为它版本更新，它基础算子一般来说会变得少一点点。啊，哎，那现在这个语言就是因为普罗它有采集像容器层面，包括数据层面，嗯，这种它这些语言都能够兼容吗？可以啊，只要你给我例子，我就能写呀、啊。啊，好的，好的，谢谢啊。嗯，谢谢。呃，我自己也在做一些 expression 生成方面的一些实验吧，然后我发现我看到你们有用 GPT 三点五 Turbo 来做这个。呃 ，PromQ 的这个生成，然后你们有测试过 GPT 三点五和 GPT 四在这个生成效率或者正确性上面的一些区别吗？因为就我自己的经验来看，就是其实 GPT 四的这个生成的正确性上面会远远高于三点五。然后不知道你们在这方面有没有什么关于三点五的一些调优，或者说是有一些 Prompt 上面做一些特别的一些工作？嗯，好的，非常感谢。我重复一下这个问题，因为这个规矩是要先重复问题，我刚忘了。就是您说在这个 Chat GPT 三点五和 Chat GPT 四点零，就是在这个 Natural Language to Prompt 的这个性能上嘛？首先，我们调的是同一千问，我们调的不是 GPT 三点五。然后呢，其实。这一块虽然说通义千问，呃、oh, ，sorry，GTP 三点五和 GTP 四是一种非常非常好的模型，但是呢，我们这里也有分析了，它虽然很聪明，但是它其实，嗯，可能是因为数据比较少，就是它是不可能知道，就是我们一个系统里面的那些指标的名的，这个是因为它它就没训练进去嘛，这个是一个点，所以我觉得。呃，即使你模型再调优了，我们还是需要一些额外的关于我们自己的信息给到进去的。然后，呃，还有一些意图识别，这些都是要自己的信息。但是如果说那个模型它自己本身比较聪明的话，它可能就是那种泛化能力比较强。就我可能给它一个容器的，我给它一两个例子，它就能很快 get 到别的例子。但是我们，因为我们是阿里云，我们只能用通义千问。啊，所以你们在你们就就是用通义千问有取得比较不错的效果是吗？对。挺好的，就是我们的 case 当中就七十多到八十。好，我没有其他问题了，谢谢。谢谢。啊。您刚才有提到那个向量数据库，然后呃是有用像那个一些开源项目嘛，就是说能够把向量数据库和 LM 那个联合起来用的这种项目吗？啊，这个我们一开始做实验的时候，确实是有用到一些开源的向量数据库的，就是存我们那些 vectors 嘛。但是后续，因为我们现在是幺色阶段，等我们真的商业化之后，我们可能会换阿里云自己的向量数据库，因为它现在已经 release 的就在前不久，有一个这个东西。呃，就是有没有像用到一些什么 Chat Chat 这样的一个呃 Chat Chat G L M 这样的项目，去和向量数据库去对接呢？呃，就是，就那个 Chat G L M， 我们之前就一开始探索的时候，因为我们探索的比较早，当时那个同一千问还没有面向社会嘛，当时我们确实是用过一些的，然后发现它的性能可能还是比，就是我们后来又换了那个，呃，同一千问，然后发现同一千问它可能确实是效果比较好，而且它参数比较多，我们就给它全都换掉了。现在现在我们那个机器人的背后就是同一千问。OK， 谢谢。呃，我问一下，一个是就是在这个 embedding 那块儿、嗯，呃，我不知道在这个做 experiment 的时候有没有
，就是比如说选择这那个 model， 呃，有没有做一些这种取舍或者什么？嗯，其实是有的，我们做过一些尝试。嗯，但是这块其实，因为我是跟我们组的另一个同学一起负责这个 L M 应用，其实我我自己对这个 embedding， 我只是选了一个可用的，我没有特别的去调优它。那我发现可能，可能是因为我们这个 embedding， 它可能会对你去匹配那个知识的会有非常大的影响嘛。但是因为我们那个 from q r o 把它写成那个 trail of song 之后，它都很长，就它怎么它都能配到，就是跟它最合适的。就是我们就选了一个可用的之后，我们就能达到百分之七十多、百分之八十的效果。但这块也是我们后续继续调优的一个方向。OK，, okay. 呃，我还有一个问题啊，就是在做那个 proper engineering 的时候，呃，有没有遇到过一些，比如说，呃，因为你要准备一些 example 嘛，啊对，然后这个 example 的这种代表性或者是它的量，呃，不够或者是就是对那个效果会产生影响吗？我不知道这个实际的试验的时候有没有遇到过。呃。有，但是其实，在我们这一块的话，我们就是因为也可以看到，我们现在覆盖的场景也就十四个嘛，也不是很多。然后其实每一个场景你给到，就是你匹配到的三到五个就够了。这这个 trail song 其实还是非常的 work。它在它的原文里面，它解决的是那种小学应用题嘛，就是那个老那个 cafeteria 的那个，它也是三到五就可以有一个非常好的效果了。OK， 所以跟那个 use case 还是有关系的，是吧？因为这个特定的这个 p r o m q 的这个场景、啊。对，但是我们的关键它其实还是匹配到那个用户想要的算子和他想要的那个 metric name。其实你这两个给到了，他基本上就用他自己大模型的能力，他就能给到你一个很好的回答了。嗯、这是我们的经验。好的，好的，谢谢。嗯、谢谢。我觉得最痛苦的这部分就是这个图，就是你要找到一个合适的 prompt。这个就是因为你可以看到第一个拐点直接从百分之十几给我给我升到了百分之七十几。它其实那个 prompt engineering 本身虽然说听起来给提示词这件事情很简单，但是真正去做的时候发现它就是整个项目中最关键的点，就是那个那个合适的。可是形式的 prompt 是最关键、最难的，我们花了很多的时间在这一块儿。那就是说，你主要是这个 prompt 调优对吧？那反而是对这个，呃，就我我不知道这个这个阿里的大模型有配合咱们这块 ARM 这个有有没有做一些对应的这个呃优化？没有，就是商用的。完全没有是吧？对，就是商用的那个 Q N Tube， 就是商用的，就直接能调的那种。啊，我我这边其实有有些这个经验，我我跟你分享一下，但我不知道这个你有没有这样的这个对应感受，就是其实找做这块工作啊，如果你找到一个很好的模型的话，会让你的 prompt 能事倍功半，啊，嗯，呃对，但是。如果你底层的大模型如果很拉垮，那你会花大量的这个精力去写那个 prompt 工工程啊，这个会整个过程会很痛苦。嗯，啊，这个这个我不知道你怎么看看、哦、看这个事儿啊。谢谢，这个问题其实我们也有遇到，也不是，就我们也试过，就是我们找到了，其实那第一个拐点它拐到百分之十几到百分之七十，其实。就是你找到了那个 C O T， 你就能到达。然后那块我们想要从百分之七再往上升的时候，我们确实是做了很多的努力。就我去调我那个 prompt 怎么怎么地，然后发现我们的那个性能它就卡在大模型那儿，那那就算了。然后我们这个项目就停滞了，得有一个多月。然后我去干别的活了。然后回来我听说那个同意节目是九月十三号可以公开使用了。我换了一下，还真的有用。然后又给我涨了百分之十，确实是这样的。谢谢。嗯，要不就谢谢啊。所以您这个项目本身没有对这个同一千问做任何的 fine tune 是吧？就没有，完全就是 PE 之后再加一些 reg 到你的下量数据库。对，对，是这样的。好，谢谢。谢谢。那我们有请下一位演讲者，谢谢大家。